So let's discuss about uh, the trouble ticket integration with Remedy. And everyone knows what is Remedy, I hope, I guess. And I'm not an expert of Remedy. Uh, but uh, a customer asked for an integration with the, the trouble ticket system they use that was Remedy. And uh, I wrote uh, uh, this integration. Uh, we use the, the, so this is the framework in which we uh, create this application. And uh, this is the Remedy application server, the, this revision, 7604. And uh, this, is, this module must be installed. This is the help desk module. This is the version 7.6.04 service pack 1. Uh, what we do is we use the, the default web services from Remedy and that, are, that comes with this module. So this module comes with two default web services. It's one to create the ticket and another web service that is able to manage the ticket. So to get the ticket from the Remedy system. So, so it's a very simple integration. What are the problems? The problems, of course, are the mapping from the OpenMS ticket model to the Remedy ticket model. OK. So let me try <coughs> to show you. So now the question is, someone knows uh, about uh, if I have to speak a little about uh, the uh, open mass model. So for the for we have a demonstration and the demonstration must be done uh, with the, the uh, on a customer side. So or we want to see how this works. So maybe the best is to see how it works. So, first of all, let me... So, let me... This software is available in OpenMS 1.11.4 snapshot, okay? And I have deployed this for uh, OpenMS 1.8. But we decided to move uh, this integration in 1.11. <coughs> so, of course, you go in the ATC directory, and you can you have the openmass.properties file. In this file, you enable the ticketing. So. He say you can use several service layer. Actually, the default service layer is the service layer that uses events. So what generates a ticket is an event. There are three events, create, update, and close, OK, with the three different UAs. In this way, so when I want to generate a, a ticket, I need only to send an event to OpenMS. OK, this is the first level. Of course, that's an abstraction layer. So that's the default. You can define your own service. And maybe you can define the, uh, your rules for creating a ticket. OK, but uh, the, uh, creating a ticket using events is very useful. For example, you can create an event from the graphical user interface. We see. In the, in the alarm page, you have a button. You can click a button. A button is another thing, sorry. The button, the button, sorry, it's a problem. The button, you click the button and you create the ticket. On the other side, you can create an automation. OK? That means that's very similar to, uh, uh, to the rules. 
But what you do with an automation is simply, you can trigger something on the database and then decide to create, to send an event. If the event is create ticket, you create the ticket. The default ticket as services is registering to get this information and then using the plugin you, you, you use, you are able to create the ticket. So remember, you need a ticket as service, sorry. Okay, and this means at least an event. So when you click on the create ticket in the graphical user in the interface, you do just, you send an event to the OpenMS service, okay? Uh, so let's go through this. By default, uh, you have uh, the null ticketer plugin. You see, this is commented now. What means null ticketer plugin? Of course, it's a plugin that does nothing. <laughs> okay, so you can say the ticketer service is always active. So if I do If I run this, oh my gosh, I was, okay. If I run this, you see that uh, somewhere there is uh, a ticketer service here and it's running, okay. So if you send events without configuring, with the configuring, let's uh, move on the other, the null ticketer plugin, you send the event to the, to the ticketer. The default, the default ticketer service instantiate this null ticketer plugin that does nothing and you lost you that. So if you want, so you see which are the components, it's easy. Okay, I send, I have an event. That's three events, create ticket. Okay, update and it seems to me I remember close or something like that. Okay, and this all goes to the sticker service. The ticketer service, of course, because OpenMS is not a trouble ticketer, needs a plugin to instantiate and to write the ticket. Okay, you can have different ticketer service. This, the default ticketer service take events. Other ticketer service can take other kind of objects in the inputs on the, as for creating tickets. Okay, now we are speaking, so, we have speak about the, uh, the service, but we are interested in uh, the plugins. So what uh, you have to do to create a Remit integration? You have to create a, a, tree, a plugin for, uh, for Remedy. Okay, usually you have uh, OpenMS as you are, is our API. Okay, very poor, very simple. But, uh, of course, it has an object, that is the ticket object. And the ticket object has, you can see here, where is it? If you go to the ticket class, you see what are the most important thing of the ticket object, are the states. And there are only three states, open, cancelled, or closed. No way. Okay. Then if you get the plugin class, the plugin class, so if you want to, the plugin class, you just need the two methods. The first is get. Okay. Using a string that identifies the ticket. And the second method is save or update. So all what you have to do, it's implement these two methods for remedy. It's 
uh, an half easy. Uh, but, of course, you have to map objects. Because you see that the heavy, who knows remedy knows that the information that holds a ticket in remedy is much richer than the information that is in, uh, you know, uh, that owns a ticket from OpenMS. Okay, so a mapping problem arises. This problem, uh, so let me, I don't know if you are interested in seeing this, but uh, we go to the configuration file. So now we go, we have to uncomment this. And if you see here down, there is the place, we, this is openmess.properties, where I can say who is the plugin. So the remedy plugin is, you can see here, let me put it on the top of the screen so you can read better. Okay, so that's the three things you need. It's the first thing is org open mesh net manager ticket or remedy remedy ticket plugin. So which plugin you want to use? For other systems, there are other plugins. The second is important because otherwise you don't have that's a property that uh, uh, enables the manager of the thing in the graphical user interface. If this is a fault, you know, it's, it's, it's a just overmass Alan trouble ticketing enable. This means that you can create and manage the trouble ticket directly from the alarm dotate page. If you say false, you don't see anything. Okay, and finally, the tired is a way of connecting to the external system. Take care that this is an Italian installation. It's IT, ITA, Italiano, okay? And uh, the link, so I go into the tail, into the detail of the ticket. So, and the dollar ID, dollar ID is just the, the ticket ID that the system, when you created the ticket, gives you. But this works only for Italians. Okay, so you see, the, you understand that the server is, uh, that's the IP address of the server. And here is the IRCs, special object server. This can change. It depends on how you install the server. But this works only for Italian, for Italian. And I try to, if you have uh, English uh, installed, this does not work. You have to change something in, the, in it. I don't know why, but it's, it's very dependent on the, on, the, on the, how to say, the local. Now, sorry. Now, let me look at the remedy properties. So I want to consider that there are a lot of properties to set. If you don't set one of these property, the creation of the ticket fails. It's very strict. OK. I use the default web service. So everyone installing these modules can do this. But you have to take care that all this information are available and set. OK, you can imagine. So this is the username and the password. There is no authentication, really, here. That's, this information is passed in clear in the web services as a properties of the web service uh, of the SOAP protocol. OK? So, Usually, what you do is to uh, encrypt this kind of a communication under AKT, uh, using uh, HTTPS. Okay, uh, that's this is a, a test uh, the system, and you found here that uh, there is no HTTPS. But if you use HTTPS here, it works, and the data is encrypted. OK, because I used the Apache Web Client uh, API, and they support uh, HTTP and HTTPS protocol. OK? So let's look at this. This is the authentication data you need to put. OK? And you need 
to also, it's really not needed the two. These are optional, the locale and the time zone. And also the, the, this one. But that's for completeness. You can just try. When you go to the Remedy user interface, you got this kind of information. OK, they, they ask you. OK, and then we have uh, the two main ports. The to do mains configuration for accessing the web service. This is uh, the remedy and the point. It's all this. Okay. Which is the web service? Is this one? HPD Einstein interface. Okay. But you can have different way of this all. You have to take care about that. Okay. Depends on how you configure the remedy. Uh, the remedy server. Anyway, you found that there are two endpoints. So I'm speaking about uh, SOAP protocol. So I guess that everyone has an understanding of what is a SOAP protocol and what is a port in the SOAP protocol. So this is the name of the port. So remedy, I don't know why they decided to have two uh, web service for creating and updating the tickets, but that's all. That's what they do. And they're a slight different. So the data you need to create is not the same as the data you need to update. So some attention you have to, 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 play, to, to pay to this, otherwise you got in troubles. OK? So this is mandatory. More or less, you have to change. This, is not, this does not change. This does not change. This can change. Of course, this is the IP address and the port. And this can change, OK? It's the, because it depends on how you install the server. It's just depending on the, the installation you made, OK? So here we have uh, another interesting uh, feature, because the, the open MS, do you don't have a target group in our objects. OK, and the, I told you that <laughs> the ticket implementation in OpenMS is poor. But the user had a requirements in which he wants to choose by one of the possible targets. This is a, that's usually you can call targets, you can use two. For example, in other places, in other trouble ticket systems, they say, oh, write the ticket in this queue or in another queue. Or remedy use targets has has name. So you have the, these two target groups with these properties. This will be used in the UFIL interface. Okay, should be uh, defined here. And you have also to understand that this must exist into remedy. Okay, otherwise you got a failure. OK, so here is uh, another, uh, this is uh, another, uh, this commented. OK, then you have a default group. So if you don't choose the group, it automatically choose TNNet. OK? This is important. You cannot imagine. If you don't, should be someone user in Remedy that has OpenMS and TNN as first name or last name. Otherwise, it fails. OK? It's crazy, but it is. This is a still very important. This is the service CIA, the service identifier. OK? And that would be a full name if you, it's just like another queue. And there is also this other one, the service record ID. And this could be also exist. You cannot, uh, so this is information that uh, the remedy, who wrote the remedy, trouble ticket, who configured it, send you. So they, they write service for users, and you need to do that for accessing that. OK? So this is a senior support company. Must exist in remedy. OK? That's not uh, a, an optional field. 
It's just uh, he should found this into the system to write, to the ticket to be created. If I change something here, it does not work anymore. OK? And also this one, support organization. So we have now what is the categorization tier. OK? You can have your own categorization tier. And just you can choose one. You can choose this. So it's just incident, generic, non blockante And you can define which, OK? This is also remedy service type must exist. Report source, direct input. Everything is mandatory. You can have different report source. I listed here other options of the default resource source in remedy. OK? I write direct input because I say I'm writing <laughs> directly to you. OK? Into there. You see, the, there is a lot of information in the configuration file. That's why I'm looking at this file. It's boring, but that is. Then you can also have the impact. You can set the impact among these four. OK? And also the urgency. OK? You can set this. And this is the reason for reopen. When you reopen a ticket, then it takes the default reason from here. OK? This is what they is called in remedy when you close the remedy ticket directly from OpenMS. OK, that's. So there are, we finished. So no, no more information. OK? That's done. So now, what, how looks the graphical user interface uh, with Remedy with this? So I told you that uh, to create a ticket, you need to send and create event, OK? And the reasonably, you want to see, so here is. So you see that no ticket is created. OK? And if you go here down, you have create ticket. You see also that, uh, sorry, I, you don't see. Let me try to move. OK. You see also that you can add the comment and that you can choose the impact and the destination group. OK? That's an add-on we created. So let me say here, Uise 2013, diamoci, let's critical impact and choose Threatenet. So let's try to create a ticket. So you see here that the state is pending. OK, it can take some time. He's open it. OK, and you have a link here to access the system. So, and here is the system. And let me, I don't remember, I never remember the username and password. OK, and now it's not, it's not a production system. It's very slow, but now it comes. It's thinking. And here, you have all the information. OK, and you have, uh, you see, all the mandatory things and so on. What is interesting is you have the summary. Here, 
that tells you information about who make, that's with the detail of the ticket. Okay, <coughs> and here is the nodes. You can see the nodes. There is a lot of information in the nodes, and also you see Ubermass user comment here. Okay, so you see also that the urgency is critical uh, and all these things. Then here you can manage the ticket and so on. So, so the ticket you can close the ticket uh, by OpenMS. Of course, if I close, uh, you can just, but uh, take uh, care, you have to run the update. So, uh, it's strange, but uh, let me try to close the ticket, okay, on Remedy. Uh, where is the Remedy? How do I close the ticket? I'm not uh, a great uh, Remedy man. How I can close this ticket? Eh? No, no, I can close the ticket. Uh, auto assign, assign to me, details. Uh, <sighs> eh? Before you close it, um, for example, urgency, critical. Yes. Does it come from your configuration file? It comes, uh, I choose it from uh, in the Grab user interface. In this implementation, you can choose the urgency. Yes, absolutely. When I create the ticket, uh, I, I select urgency while critical. If you look. Sorry. No, this is, uh, these are uh, build. So now, of course, create ticket is uh, disabled. But uh, I build in the, in the, in the, in the config file. Uh, of remedy, you have that the default is minor. But you can overwrite in the graphical user interface. And this is written by hand in the, in the, in the page. It's not uh, inherited from the config file as the groups. OK, because it's easy, because this is mandatory. The groups are configurable by the user. The, the impact is all, they are always the same. I don't want to add this into configuration file. I don't really need it. I just write it into the... Is, is it possible to set the, uh, the level of criticality based on uh, the event? Uh, of course, here, no. But you can, be not from the graphical user, so from the graphical user interface, yes. Because you have the, you, create the ticket. The automatic creation you can. It's just, what I do is just, I use the event parameters, so has a key. So if you look at the ticket object in OpenMS has um, properties, the name of this property is attributes. So what I do is I map yes. the attributes and the same. But of course, this attribute has a keyword with the values. Okay, so if the attribute matches a keyword that is used in Medary, in Remedy, sorry, the ticket plugin is able to say, oh, that's it's this. And you can overwrite that. It's not very complicated to do. Do you have it here? Nothing between I can show you because let me import the code. So it's easy. Uh, you should, uh, if you, so you can see the ticket into the database. So the solution could be VI okay. So you see, this is the event, okay? okay. 
So I just make some proofs. Let me take a look. Select asterisk. So I don't know if you see something because I'm just on the on the bottom. Okay, you see here, I just, this is the event parms, okay? And here you see that I put, oh my God, how can I do this? So let me do like that, okay? So you see what I send as an object, as a params. This is a send as attributes to the tickets. Okay, so I send the alarm UAE, okay? The alarm ID, the remedy assigned group. You see? And the, this is the alarm tree. And also you see the remedy urgency. So when you send an event like that with create, you can create whatever you want. And then also, I also assign the remedy user comment. So on the plugin side, I read these are uh, params, okay? And become attributes of the ticket. And the plugin is able to read this. If you have a different plugin, of course, you are not able to do this because uh, this is not understand by other than my plugin. Okay, it's something, uh, <laughs> it's something special. In line of a principle, in line of a principle, we should have a mapping of the attributes by default and something mandatory. But actually, we don't have it. So you have to, if the user has some special requirements, you have to put this information as a parameter into the, into the, into the event that creates the ticket. Or better, into the event that triggers the, create, the, uh, the ticket creation. Okay? So if I close the ticket, uh, Stefano, how I close the ticket in Remedy? Uh, it's ah, resolve, resolve. It's here. <laughs> I resolved it. Let me solve this detect. It's done. And he said, oh, yes, uh, okay, uh, resolution details. Oh, ti ho risolto in italiano, okay? Save. Of course, because uh, I have to assign to someone, let me... Assign a C a Paolo. Okay, status reason. <sighs> it's a remedy, but it is like that. You do that. And then I save. Okay? What happened? So let's take a look at what happened to the user interface of OpenMS. The ticket state is always open. I reload the page, and you see, it's always open. To, s to see the real status of the ticket, I have to run an update. Then he's updated pending, because he goes to the ticketer service and asks for getting update. Now I try, and whew, it's closed. Okay. Why, obviously, you do it? No problem. Just send an event to update. That's it's nice. Uh, in some sense, it's related to this situation of the events. Okay, and you can run and update events in the in the automation. 
So what you can do is just, you want to be upgrade every 50 minutes, you run, you send an event that you we understand that updating is sending an event <laughs> and getting the information, okay? So this time I can say uh, if there are some questions. I, I think I'm late, a little bit. I apologize. Uh, uh, of course, the question, uh, we can have the question uh, in, the, in the chaos cafe, okay? So, you know that chaos is not chaos. That's what I learned at the university. And why you call it chaos? Chaos is confusion. No. It's order and chaos. It's, please. How uh, you can do that? Uh, I don't understand the question. Sorry. I mean, the mechanism that you here, that you see a chain between events. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's like uh, that. So you send uh, in the default ticketer service. You need to send an event to do these three things: create, update, or delete something like that, or close. Okay. You can do three things on the on the remedy, on the objects. Okay. This, the default remedy service knows who is the plugin. And then for each of this, he calls an operation that you see, I told you what are the operation he can call. If you go to the default uh, ticketer service, okay. Okay, let me see. For example, set ticket state, close ticket, fall alarm, something like that. Create ticket, okay? It's clear what happens. That when you send the event, where is the, oh my gosh. I don't want to, 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 to stay too much into the tale of how it's written, but you see here that uh, you have here the, the kind of, uh, of okay? of the event you have. You can cancel, you can close, you can create, and you can update. Okay, and here you have each of this, this method on events tells what you do. Okay, and uh, for example, the event, uh, create event, you do handle create, okay? The end will create tests if some params are there. Otherwise, do nothing. <laughs> okay? And then asks the ticketer service layer to create the ticket and it sends the alarms and the attributes. You see? Where is it? It's here. Oh my gosh. It's here. Okay? At the end, I call the ticket service layer. What does the ticket service layer? Of course, this is an implementation. This is an interface. Let me see what happens. The default ticket service layer. So what happened to, for creating a ticket? OK, the first, I get the alarm. OK, then I create the ticket for alarm. I set the attributes. And what I do is easy. M ticketer plugin save or update. I call the method of the ticketer. Who is this ticketer plugin? Of course, is a class that implements the interface. If I do this, oh my gosh. So I do that one. You see, this is the interface of a class. And if you go into remedy, uh, into remedy particular plugin, it is, has is our implementation. So you see from events, or I got into a method of the default ticketer service. And what does this default ticketer service is? Call a method on the ticketer plugin. 
okay, after doing something else. Why we have this abstraction layer of the ticketer service? Because you can have, you can write your ticketer service as you want. Okay, in this moment, for example, we create tickets only starting for alarms. Okay, the default ticketer service, if you look here, what it does is just, I expect an alarm ID, okay, as a key. Maybe you won't want to create a ticket using the, the, an event, okay, or <coughs> you just want to create a ticket because some log in the database is created because you, have a, you catch an exception <laughs> or something like that, okay. And then you create your, your service, and you can just run all this stuff. So when you create the ticket, so it's just a, a problem of translation. You have the objects, and you need, first of all, to translate from the OpenMS objects to the ticket, the OpenMS ticket objects. When you have the OpenMS ticket objects, you create, you get the plugin, and then you send this, the, the open mess ticket object to the plugin. And then you, of course, need to change the open mess ticket object in the, into, the, the, into the service object, so into the remedy object in this case. I don't know if it's clear. I don't want to, to stay anymore. So, that, uh, but I have the code. It's look at the code, it's easy because like that, my English is very bad. So. Maybe I think that I'm saying something and I do and I say something else. <laughs> and you, it's usual. So language is very important. And so we can, sp if you want, we can spend two minutes in looking at what really happens. Okay? Thank you. <laughs>